Hey everyone, this is Rohit. Welcome back to my code walkthrough of OAuth 2.0 bin. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to download the code from GitHub, how to run it, and we'll see OAuth 2.0 bin in action. I'm going to be using the Insomnia REST client for the demo, but you can also use Postman or any other tool you like. Next, I'm going to be giving you a very brief tour of the project to get acquainted with uh, the directory structure and where stuff is located. And uh, it will also be a great chance to showcase the features that are available in this project. So this is going to be a relatively light episode. And uh, without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to, well, install OAuth to bin onto your computer. So github.com slash my name slash OAuth to bin. You don't have to type this, it will be in the description. Uh, check out the readme, I've mentioned some of the features, the motivation behind this project, the plan, most of the plan is now done, all of the core stuff at least is done. What we're interested in uh, right now is the standard installation section. So if you want to install this using go get is the best option. You can git clone this, but go get just runs git clone under the hood. So this is the best way. Just copy this, paste this in your terminal. I'm not going to do this because I already have it installed. Uh, if you want to open this in your favorite code editor, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. You can uh, do, you can use this command. So Go actually clones this in this folder. So in the Go path, src, github.com. I just press tab, that's why it auto-completed. And uh, uh, let's just cd into that folder as well okay now before we look at the code i want to show you a demo a quick demo of oauth 2 bin in action but before that let's just ensure that all of the tests are passing yes they are you can also check this in the ci we have a tick travis ci has given us a tick so all check all tests uh, are passing now, there are two ways you can run OAuth to bin locally. The first one is the simple go run main.go. The main.go file is at the root of the folder, so you won't have to CD anywhere. Or you can build a binary and then run the binary, or you can even install OAuth to bin onto your computer, or you can run it with Docker. Let's just do the first method first, go run main.go. Now, before you do this, you will need to ensure that you have Redis installed on your computer. And the Redis server will need to be uh, running in the background. So if you want to check whether Redis is running, just do Redis CLI. And if you see this prompt, you can be sure that you have Redis running in the background. So let's just do go run main.go. It has started on port 8080 and as you can see we are using the local redis server go to localhost 8080 and this is the home page so i have a separate card for each of the four different flows under oauth 2.0 authorization code implicit the implicit grant flow uh, resource owner password credentials and the client credentials flow so i think the last two have been deprecated recently but the first two are still there and authorization code is the most popular one if you click on these cards they'll expand and they'll show you all of the parameters that are required uh, if you want to use them in your OAuth client so let's just do this i'm going to show you uh, OAuth 2 bin in action so let's just check it out with a rest client and OAuth client so i'm using insomnia and I'm going to create a new request. I'm going to call it OAuth 2 OA 2 b for OAuth 2 bin. We're not going to send any actual request here, but uh, we just want to see if the, uh, the authorization process works. So I'm going to select OAuth 2. As you can see, Insomnia offers all of the four flows that are part, part of OAuth 2.0. So let's start with authorization code. Now you'll need to uh, you'll need to add all of these parameters, and that's the reason I have uh, mentioned them on the home page. So just click on them. You don't need to select and copy. You just click, and it gets copied to your keyboard. Access token URL, client ID, and uh, client secret. Don't worry if you don't understand what this means. I'm just trying to show you. Uh, the project just give you a brief tour of the project in action we will be looking at all of these things uh, in detail in the upcoming episodes 
Now I'm going to click on fetch tokens. This is the equivalent. Clicking on this button is the equivalent of clicking on those sign in with Google or sign in with Facebook buttons. So as you can see, we see this authorization screen. Uh, Auth2 bin would like to be Batman, fly to Mars, live forever. So I've just added funny permission strings. And actually, if you do this again, you'll see different ones. It shows three random strings. By clicking accept, you agree that you're awesome. Yeah, I'm awesome. So I'm going to click on accept. And we get the token. So this is the actual access token. And this is the refresh token. We'll look at what refresh tokens are in uh, the authorization code episode, which should be the next one. In auth to bin, all of the tokens are prepended with this eight character substring, which indicates which flow issued this token. So as we are using authorization code, we have auth code at the beginning of this token. So that worked. Let's check out the next flow, which is implicit grant. Uh, I don't think we need to add anything here. You could add a redirect URL, but that's kind of optional. Let's clear this token and fetch another one. This time we should get uh, an implicit token. Sure enough, we got one. Let's try resource owner password credentials. Now this requires some username and password. So let's pick them up from here. By the way, all of these parameters are completely configurable. You just have to mention them in a JSON file and auth 2 bin will pick them up and I'll show you how when we get to the code. So fetch tokens. Now this one doesn't actually require authorization since we are already providing the username and password. So pass cred, this indicates that these tokens were issued by the resource owner password credentials flow. Let's clear and check out the very last one. Client credentials, I don't think we need anything here, any more parameters here, fetch tokens and we get it. So you may have noticed that only authorization code and uh, resource on a password credentials support refresh tokens and uh, that's a minor detail that we'll look at in their respective episodes. Let's jump back to Visual Studio Code and I'm, I'm not going to get into the code but just give you a brief tour of the project and how it's organized. So everything starts from main.go, the execution starts from here. That's why we ran main.go here, go run main.go. All of the stuff that main.go uses resides in OAuth2. So this is the main directory, main source directory. It has a few packages. The first one is this cache package. Now, as I said in the first video, if you recall that OAuth2 bin actually uses Redis for persistence. And that's why I said that you need Redis running in the background. So it uses Redis, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> it uses Redis as a cache and it has separate files for all of the flows. So auth code cache, this handles all of the cache and the tokens and all of that stuff related to authorization code. The same goes for client credentials, implicit cache, resource owner password credential, ROPC. There are respective tests. And there's this interesting housekeep.go file. Uh, once tokens expire, uh, we don't want them just, uh, you know, residing in Redis. So housekeep, actually, this is a process that periodically runs and clears out expired tokens. So that is the cache package. The configuration package is kind of interesting. As I said, that auth 2 bin is highly configurable. So you can actually, actually configure all of these uh, these parameters, this client ID, this client secret, uh, even the port that you're running on. And all of this uh, configuration information is stored in these objects. There's a separate config struct for each of the flows. And there's this overall one called OA2 config, which houses all of these together. If you look at main.go again, I'm actually passing these two paths to our configuration files and you can specify them in this config folder. So these are the flow parameters, as I said, client ID, client secret, you can mention them, you can mention whatever you want here. This could be Scooby-Doo for all auth 2 bin cares. Uh, there's also an inbuilt rate limiter in OAuth 2 bin, so you can specify the rate policies for individual route. So there's this route in OAuth 2 bin called slash echo, and you can set a limit 
or the number of requests it receives in this interval of time we'll look at this don't worry we'll look at this if you don't understand i just want to showcase the features and you know where all of the stuff resides in this video then oauth2 bin also provides a middleware architecture so you can easily add new features uh so all of the middleware reside in this package the rate limiter that i just mentioned is also designed as a middleware and this is the main package i think the server package this contains the handlers for the server endpoints i have created a separate file for each of the flows and uh, this contains functions that handle these routes and the server.go is also one of the most important files in the project this contains uh, stuff related to you know this this server that we're creating this comes from server.go so it sets up routes it reads in the configuration it sets up uh, shutdown mechanisms and all of that good stuff that's for the server package i'm going to close all of this and the utils is well there's just uh, some utility methods here uh, if you see this is the these are the funny permissions that we were seeing on the authorization screen so we just randomly select three out of those i think that's it for the code here so all of the public data the html javascript css it all resides in this public folder and uh, lastly before i go i did mention that you can run this project via docker so let's just see how you can do that now auth2 bin has been configured in such a way that you can run this with docker compose the benefit of using docker is that you won't have to install redis separately even if you don't have redis on your computer you can just you, uh, you can just run auth2 bin using docker it will spin up two different containers one for the actual server the auth2 bin server the go the one we just saw and it will also spin up another container for redis and it will run the redis server there it will connect these two containers together and auth2 bin is actually smart enough to detect in which environment it's running so if it's running in docker it will automatically connect to that container running redis running auth2 bin with docker is quite easy just do docker compose up and as you can see it's spinning up the it spun up the redis container it spun up the auth2 bin container and now we are running let's just open this in localhost 8080 and we have the same thing again in the next episode we'll talk about authorization code flow i will be explaining the flow itself and we'll of course look at the implementation so that's it for this episode please consider subscribing if you found this useful and hit the bell icon so that you're notified when the next episode is out i'm going to be uploading new episodes very soon because i'm at home in quarantine because of covid19 thanks for watching i hope you learned something see you next time